Hi. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how to do this question, this hypothesis test question, by a probability method. And I did say that there was an alternative method, and that's the critical region method. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate is, as a work solution in this video. So, if you want to see the probability method, just go on my website, examsolutions.net, and you should be able to locate it. Okay, well, let's just run through the critical method then for this particular question. I'll read it out again. So we've got that David claims that the weather forecasts produced by a local radio are no better than those achieved by tossing a fair coin and predicting rain if a head is obtained or no rain if a tail is obtained. He records the weather for 30 randomly selected days. Now the local radio forecast is correct on 21 of these days. And what we've got to do is test David's claim at the 5% level of significance. And we've got to state our hypothesis clearly. Okay, well, the first thing I notice in this question, there's no random variable defined. So I'm going to introduce a random variable, x, let x be the random variable, number of days the forecast is correct. And I need to work out what kind of distribution x follows. Well, it's going to be a binomial distribution. And I know that because I've got a finite number of trials, 30. And I know that there's two outcomes. I know that if David throws this coin, it will either be a head or a tail. And so assuming that events occur independently and probability remains constant, which it basically does, then I'm going to say then that it follows a binomial, n is 30, and the probability of success I'm writing as p. Notice I don't write it as 0.5. What I'm doing is I'm writing that as HO or H0. HO is that that probability P is going to equal a half. Now on that basis, if P equals a half, I know that we can have anything going from 0 up to 30. And if H0, HO is a half, I would expect 15 of those days where David is correct just by tossing his coin. Now the thing is, we've seen that there are 21. We've observed that 21 days that the radio station forecast that the weather correctly. So x equals 21. Now the question is, we've got 21 which is greater than the 15 but we don't know whether that is an extreme result or not. We don't know where the critical region is. So we're going to work out what that critical region is. I'm going to label it here as, say, R. So if you get any value greater than or equal to R, then you'll be in this region here where we're going to reject HO. Now on this basis, then, I will be having an alternative hypothesis, H1, where P is greater than a half. Okay, because if it's greater than a half, we'll get values beyond the 15. And I'm also testing this at the significance level of 5%. So I'm going to say alpha equals 5% or 0.05. Now to work out this critical value R, I'm going to work off the system which I always work with. I always write down something like this. Reject the null hypothesis, HO, if the probability that X is greater than or equal to the value R, this critical value, given that HO is true, all right, turns out to be less than 0 0.05. This would only change if I had a critical value which was lower than 15. I would change this to the probability x is 
less than or equal to r, given that ho is true, turns out to be less than the significance level. Okay? But for this one, we're looking at what we call an upper tail. So probability x is greater than or equal to that critical value. Now, all I need to do then is work with this statement. So knowing that I'm going to be using the cumulative binomial tables, which work out probabilities being less than or equal to a value, this is no good to me. So I need to change this. I need to say something like, therefore, 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to, and I'd have to be looking at one less value than this one, so it'd be r minus 1. Given that ho is true, well, that's still going to be less than 0 0.05. Now, if I rearrange this inequality, I could subtract 0.05 from both sides. That would give me 1 minus 0.05, which is 0.95. And if I move this to the other side, add this probability to both sides, I would therefore have the probability that x is less than or equal to r minus 1, given that ho is true, Okay, has to be greater than 0.95. Okay, that's just simply rearranging that above inequality. Now I'm going to use my table. So I'm going to say here from tables, let's see what r minus 1 is going to be. Well, I've taken an extract from the tables, the commutative binomial tables. I'm looking under n equals 30 and p equals 0 0.5. 0 0.50 would be the column that I had. And when I look down my values for x, when I got to 18, I saw that it was 0 0.8998, which clearly is not greater than 0.95. The first value that was greater than 0.95 was this one, where x was equal to 19. It gave me 0 0.9506. So that's the value that r minus 1 would have to be. So from tables, we've got that r minus 1 has to equal 19. And if I rearrange this for r, adding 1 to both sides, that critical value is now 20. Now I've got an observed value, okay? Let's just update this. We can see that now r is equal to 20. I've got an observed value of 21, clearly in this region over here. This is the value then that would make us reject the null hypothesis. So I'm going to say here that in summary, since the observed value x equals 21 is greater than the critical value r, then what we've got is our significant result. Significant, we reject the null hypothesis, p is greater than the half. So we can say that there is evidence to suggest that David's claim is not correct. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea of how we go about then this critical region method. And as I said earlier, if you wanted to look at an alternative method, just where we work out a probability, if you are viewing this video on my website, examsolutions.net, you should see a link with this one to the alternative method. Okay?